Hi, in this video we'll take a look at how you can build a Docker image for running our applications and algorithms. The target audience for this video is primarily focused around engineering and DevOps oriented roles and not specifically for a data scientist. So uh, if you are a data scientist, this m might not necessarily be the most uh, interesting video. Uh, if you just saw the subject R here and came to this video, but uh, feel free to have a look. In terms of the actual video itself, uh, I'm assuming um, a couple of things. So number one, you're familiar with how you can create Docker images um, and you have some familiarity with R. And uh, in the video specifically, we'll take a look at how um, you can install R packages from within Docker and um, a general idea in terms of how we can create Docker images for running our algorithms and um, have come across a few issues or uh, common scenarios in the past and we'll talk about it at a high level. Um, this is a quick overview video so won't be getting into any of the uh, nitty gritty details uh, specifically in this video but at the end of the video hopefully it'll give you an idea in terms of um, how you can create these Docker images to quickly uh, productionize algorithms uh, and deliver it in a quick uh, DevOps pipeline. So that's really the objective. Now onto the video itself uh, or the actual demo. Um, so in terms of uh, the structure of the project, uh, it's, uh, I've got it uh, very simple. We have a Docker file here and we have an R file uh, which contains the list of packages and, I, uh, and you can obviously ignore this uh, text file here. So again, we have a Docker file which we'll take a look at in more detail in just a bit and then we have an R file here. So the general idea is that um, this as a file would reside uh, within uh, your Docker project. Uh, so again, in general, you might have something uh, of, uh, you obviously have different files for R, which might be plugged in through some kind of a CI CD pipeline. But um, this as a, a file would kind of like be residing within your Docker file or, or along with your Docker file. And here, uh, all it's really doing is it's orchestrating um, a list of uh, installations from within R. So if you're uh, from a Python background um, and if you're wondering if there's something like an equivalent of a pip install, um, not directly, but this is the closest way that you can achieve the same. So uh, basically it's an R file uh, and we'll be using R itself to actually perform all these installations. Um, so here you can see a simple example that uh, we can do uh, an installation for Postgres and a few other libraries and also an example of how we can install libraries uh, using specific versions. Now the latter obviously is um, much better as a practice um, because you know that if you peg it against a certain version, it'll always, always have a certain behavior. Now in order to um, uh, run it against a version that's using the install version that's going to be in the DevOps tool. So that's a prerequisite. Uh, so obviously you will want to uh, install uh, the dev tools first before you can actually call the install version. So again, you have the flexibility of uh, installing packages um, um, with a specific version or if you just use install packages, it'll try and get the latest uh, for your platform. Um, so we'll take a look at both these two in action and uh, finally once you have this list um, uh, we can then take a look at uh, the docker file itself. So the docker file uh, very light very simple uh, we'll start with the top so um, instead of using a base uh, Ubuntu version for example we can actually use the R base um, which as the name suggests already has the uh, R core or the R base itself installed and again it's a good idea to peg it against a, a version of R. Um, so obviously you need not use R base you can just use Ubuntu and then install R base on top of it but this is obviously much simpler. And then uh, standard best practice, um, do an app get update um, and then we'll want to install the, the other dependencies. So as an example, we are installing uh, these um, um, dependencies because when we want to install dev tools and when we want to install Postgres, there are a couple of other dependencies and hence that's what we are uh, installing in advance. So again, these would be very much dependent on what packages you're trying to install. So again, um, kind of using the Python analogy, uh, if you do a pip install for Postgres, that 
may not work because uh, you also need to install the other dependencies uh, and you'll use uh, app get install if you will and that's uh, exactly the same uh, kind of process for running it um, with our packages so uh, run the app get install uh, for uh, the prerequisites before actually running the R libraries or the R packages install and then uh, again this is just an example of uh, a common practice so you don't want to um, uh, copy this uh, R package file at the root level uh, or maybe you do maybe you don't but uh, in my case I'd uh, prefer to put it into a folder within the docker uh, and then um, um, run it from there so essentially what we are doing is we are running R script on this file here so that's basically how it's wired up uh, obviously, in the real world, uh, you'll have uh, a lot of other best practices incorporated, like, say, for example, an entry point um, and various others, which I'm going to skip for the uh, for keeping it really simple and light. Uh, so that's how it's all wired up. So again, we have a Docker file, um, which um, we are using the R base, uh, installing uh, through app get install, the prerequisites, and then basically running the R script and the install packages. Uh, so feel free to pause the video, go back and uh, kind of review the code if you want to. Um, but let's crack on and actually go ahead and start building the the R image. Uh, I'm sorry, the Docker image. Um, so let's. Um, so here I've got the Docker file and the R packages file. So everything's uh, in the local folder. So let's actually build um, minus T. I'll go, let me just call this uh, docker image algo and uh, take the files from the local folder. So obviously in my case, I've actually uh, built it in advance. Uh, so hence why it's um, coming up, I mean, processing quite quickly. Um, in your case, obviously, if you don't already have the R base and if you haven't built this layer already, it's going to take uh, just a couple of minutes. Uh, it's bound to take longer to uh, actually do the R script installation. So as you can see, it's actually uh, going ahead and installing all the um, R packages. Um, so in some case, the R packages uh, are built from code. So that those libraries are bound to take um, a, a lot longer to install um, in the Docker image. So I'm going to let this run and pause the video and we'll resume in uh, once uh, the uh, setup's fully complete. Okay, so it looks like um, the uh, image has been uh, built successfully. Uh, so we now have a new image called Algo. Um, so let's uh, take a look at that. So we do Docker images grab Algo. Uh, we can see that, uh, yep, we have a brand new Docker image, uh, which was just created uh, about a minute ago and um, tells you what size the image is. And obviously that will be dependent on um, the underlying OS which um, and um, the various layers and obviously the R packages that have been installed. Uh, so basically we are at a point that we have created a custom um, Docker image for running R algorithm. So let's, uh, let's uh, take a look at um, uh, how we can work uh, with uh, that Docker container. So as an example, uh, if we just want to uh, run um, uh, a bash. Uh, so again, we uh, you may remember from the Docker file, we have not created a specific entry point. In the real world, obviously, you will want to um, uh, use an entry point into an R file, uh, the actual algorithm, or maybe have a bash script that um, runs the algorithm and use that bash script as an entry point. But uh, to keep things simple, uh, we haven't done all of that. Um, and uh, we can just um, uh, uh, get into a bash session and take a look at what's uh, there in um, by creating a container. So uh, again, since we have this image algorithm, uh, so um, just basically going to run it in interactive mode, uh, just given it a name uh, so that it's easy for us to uh, work with it. We are going to be using the Docker container and we are going to get into a bash session. Uh, so sure enough, we obviously um, um, are in a uh, command line, um, a bash shell. Uh, and if we were to um, run 
R and uh, we can play around with it but um, it, typically what I would do in most of these cases is uh, try and um, optimize it a slight bit further so let me get out of this session here and uh, I've got some uh, code that or, or some scripts that I've uh, created in advance so let me just pop that here so that you can take a look at um, so um, this is the command that I just ran, but normally uh, instead of just running it as is, uh, I would mostly run it uh, like this. So as an example, give it a host name. I'll come to these parameters in just a bit, but typically uh, what I would do is uh, given uh, that our algorithm itself, we want to uh, connect it to a Postgres uh, a database. So typically um, what uh, makes sense is if you have a separate uh, Docker image that's running uh, Postgres. So let's just run that. Uh, so we have Postgres. So um, that's because I've already got it running. Uh, let me kill that first. get rid of that uh, start start afresh so again now if I run that we will have an instance of Postgres running so uh, oops um, so now we have Postgres running and then we can actually uh, run oops um, run again the algorithm uh, container and link that to Postgres um, and basically as a best practice, um, uh, particularly from a DevOps and productionizing algorithms, a um, few things I found fairly useful is um, uh, some libraries like uh, utilizing log4r. Uh, so again, when you have an algorithm, a headless kind of like an algorithm that's running in the background, obviously there's no a GUI or UI that anybody's looking at. So it's good to log that uh, into um, log4j kind of like compatible uh, log file. So I find um, again um, uh, not touching the core algorithm but having a layer around the core algorithm that the data scientist would be creating and uh, making sure that we log all uh, the required uh, details into a log file. And uh, the other package I found very uh, handy from um, um, a productionizing our algorithms is to use the config. So again, uh, many a times we have code in the algorithm that's relying on resources, like say, for example, how do you uh, build a connection string uh, for um, the uh, integrating it with Postgres uh, backend or, um, you know, it might be pointing to uh, any files or resources or maybe it's um, either input files or it's generating output files. So normally you will want to use uh, the config uh, library in R uh, to actually parameterize this in the form of uh, maybe a YAML config file and utilize that. Though I don't have code uh, for this demo for that, but just uh, giving you an idea that these are uh, uh, packages which I find very handy when we are talking about productionizing our algorithms. Uh, so again, Again, you typically want to um, uh, install it for a particular version, but uh, right now in this demo, I uh, just kept a vanilla example of uh, just getting the latest code. Uh, so again, if you're using the R config uh, library in particular, um, the library utilizes um, uh, a YAML uh, data structure, and I won't get into the details today, but just uh, give you an idea that uh, when you're running uh, the uh, the algorithm, if you want to provide pass in environment variables, uh, obviously that's a good idea. So let's actually run this now. Um, let me make sure that, uh, oh yeah, um, the way I've um, obviously wired it up is that um, on exit it will actually remove uh, the container, so it's bound to be very clean. All right, so this time when we um, uh, run it, uh, obviously we've wired it up uh, with uh, the Postgres uh, database. Um, so again, assuming these are uh, concepts you are already familiar with using Docker, so not getting into the details. So now, if we run an R uh, session, obviously we um, uh, we now have all the libraries um, that have been installed in the image. So uh, as an example, if uh, if uh, if we are trying to use the R Postgres SQL, you can see that it's already available. That's because uh, the image, um, we have already pre-installed all of this. So again, that's a good example of how we can uh, deploy um, uh, 
uh, algorithms into production fairly quickly once we have dockerized um, that whole uh, process. Uh, so again, in summary, um, this quick video, we have demonstrated how we can build uh, a Docker image um, and um, within the Docker image, we can install all the R packages that are required for running uh, R algorithms. And we have taken a look at uh, very, very briefly how uh, we can uh, utilize um, uh, some of the best practices for uh, running configuration and um, uh, dockerizing an algorithm. So again, I appreciate we have only brushed the surface, uh, but hopefully this is a quick getting started video to help you uh, building and deploying our algorithms uh, using Docker. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, do drop a comment if you have any questions. Thanks.